Government's looking into new measures to combat ticket touts. It could make photo ID compulsory to get into big music and sporting events. Other proposals in the consultation published by the Department for Culture, Media and Sport today include printing individual names on tickets or doing away with paper tickets altogether. Uh, let's talk to Jerry Sutcliffe, he's the Sports Minister. Hello. Hi, Nabi Eric Baker, Chief Exec of the Secondary Ticket Seller via GoGo. Hello to you. Hi. And Nick Patel is Chairman of UK Sports Major Events Panel. Hello, Nick. <coughs> Good morning. So, Derry, you're launching this consultation today and you want to, you genuinely want to hear from people about the kind of measures you're looking at, what they think will work. That's right. I, I've been interested in this for about three years now as former consumer minister and we were aware of people being ripped off by uh, secondary ticket sales in particular. But we want the primary market as well to make sure there's a high level of compu uh, you know, consumer protection and making sure that people do the best they can to stop people being ripped off. And that's your main concern, that consumers pay an awful lot of money for tickets that perhaps cost well, it's, it's, 100 it's, quid less, I mean, 200 quid less, 300 quid less? Well, exactly. You know, and uh, we can't ever stop people wanting to pay over the odds for tickets. But what we can do is improve the procedures initially, and then have a, a strong code back with the secondary market to make sure that people aren't at the top. <coughs> right. Okay. But it, what about the fact that there is a demand? People are, prepa well, exactly. people are prepared I mean, to pay that. Then that's up to them. Well, uh, provided they you know the consequences. I think there's a couple of things here. There's knowledge to the consumer about you know. Um, already exists that law against fraud and people being ripped off so that uh, unfair commercial practices but people you know should be in a position where if they can get access to tickets then it should be on a fair basis if they do want to pay over the odds at least they know what they're paying and why they're paying right what would you say eric about some of the suggestions that have been put forward so far Oh, well, I absolutely agree with uh, with uh, the minister regarding the safe, secure, transparent nature that needs to take place in the secondary market. The whole reason we started Via Gogo was to give people an alternative to shady touts on a street corner or people in a pub. So safety and security for the consumer is foremost, but we also agree with the reports finding that consumers want a secondary market and they want to keep it legal. Right. I mean, the thing is... T touts aren't particularly shady and dodgy on a street corner. It's pretty open when you turn up at a big event. If you need a ticket, you will see them there openly selling their wares. Mm. Well, I think by shady and dodgy, I mean that when you see these people on a street corner as opposed to coming to a secure site like Viagogo, they might be out there in the open, but the ticket they sell you might be a fraudulent ticket, <clears throat> might be a piece of toilet paper. I mean, these types of issues that we're talking about are issues that, that I've been dealing with for the past 10 years. I'd started a company in the States called StubHub, which cleaned up touting or scalping, as the Americans called in the States, and was then acquired by eBay. And then we started Viagogo, which pioneered uh, the first exchange services with Manu and Chelsea. So I think the reality that I've seen in the 10 years I've been doing it is that you're not going to stop people from reselling tickets. The only thing you can do is give them a safe, secure alternative. Uh, Nick, are you happy with the way Viagogo approaches things? Uh, no, no, we're not. What we're seeing is that many sports uh, that we want to attract to Britain, things like the Cricket World Cup and Rugby World Cup, won't come to this country unless the government uh, gives them the protection that uh, they've given for the Olympics and for the Commonwealth Games and, and for football. And we're seeing... Which is what, sorry? Well, in making ticket touting uh, unlawful. We welcome this consultation because what we are seeing across all different sports is that the public is, is fed up of having to pay uh, over the top and with the, the uh, because of sites such as Seatwave and Viagogo because the tickets are being diverted to those who can afford to pay only and that's not a fair distribution policy which we entirely agree with the Minister is what sport is looking to try and uh, achieve. Well, I, I think I'd have to respond to two things there. One is that, you know, Nick doesn't speak for the fans and the consumers. We remember dealing, uh, speaking with Nick and hearing his views when he went in front of the Select Committee of Parliament about two years ago, and we agreed with the findings of the Select Committee, which is that consumers and fans are extremely happy with services like Viagogo, um, and they continue to use them. The second thing is an excellent point about access. Look at something like Wimbledon, where basically, unfortunately, if you want to see the men's final, with the exception of very few tickets, unless you are a member of a corporate sponsor, a member of the All England Club, or a member of the royal family, it's simply impossible to get a ticket. What we're providing, well, why don't you tell us here on the radio how many tickets for the men's final, how many tickets for the men's final are available to the general public? Can I? Can you hold that thought, gentlemen? Because <coughs> uh, we're going to talk to Debbie Purdy, who is in the news this morning. If you can wait for a few more moments, uh, Eric Baker, Nick Battelle, Jerry Sutcliffe, I don't know if you can spare us a few more moments. If you can, that would be brilliant. Uh, but we Let's continue our conversation about ticket touts with Joe Sutcliffe, the Sports Minister, Eric Baker, the Chief Executive of the Secondary Ticket Seller via GoGo, and Nick Patel, Chairman of UK Sports Major Events Panel. Uh, Eric, remind us what your question was to <coughs> Nick Patel. 
Yes, I was just saying that basically when you talk about accessibility, look at an event like Wimbledon where you have the men's final. There's a very, very small number of tickets that go into a ballot, and the rest go to corporate sponsors, club members, and the like. So, you know, Nick was uh, sort of saying that, well, that's entirely untrue. So of the capacity of center court, I'm just curious, Nick, how many uh, tickets are available to the general public for the men's final? Uh, first of all, the vast majority of tickets uh, for Wimbledon Championships are available to the public, either through the ballot or through their local tennis clubs. And in terms of uh, availability, one of the things that we've seen in the past on sites such as eBay and others is tickets which are meant to be allocated to schools, uh, being sold for highest prices, tickets, for instance, even, even tickets uh, aimed at those with disabilities being sold to a highest bidder and, and those with not disabilities who don't have disabilities. That's the sort of thing, those are the sorts of practices, I think, that has led to the review that is being asked for today and has been launched by uh, Jerry Sutcliffe. Well, I like Eric Baker is sitting in front of me and he's yeah, no, shrugging his shoulders. I just had a simple and... question. How many tickets for the men's final are available to the general well, let, public? Let ask, if, if you don't, let, if let you don't know, just no, tell no, us you uh, don't uh, know. Uh, let me ask you a question. On, on your well, what, what, hang, on, hang on, before you ask Eric a question, why don't you answer his? Well, I've said that the majority of tickets for uh, the <laughs> Wimbledon Championship no, no, are the available men's to final. the He's asking about the men's final. The public, and that's uh, that's the answer that I've g given, and that's the clear. But you uh, don't statement. agree, Eric Baker. Uh, I, I, but, nothing but to agree or disagree with. There's just not an answer. <laughs> I think that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to move on if someone okay, can't sure. or doesn't want to answer the question. That's fine. Jerry Sutcliffe, you're listening to these two gentlemen that debate with each other. What are you thinking at this point? Well, I think it shows you the complex of the issues, but there are some sporting events. And Wimbledon is a good example where there are major sporting events where we think there shouldn't be a secondary market. It should go to the, to the fans, the members, and to the general public. But where there is a secondary market, we want a, a strong voluntary code in place. I'm pleased to say that many of the secondary market people want to support that because they want to make sure people are safe and secure. Nick's right, tickets that are aimed at people with disabilities or genuine fans shouldn't be then put on the secondary market, they should go to where they designated are. And that's why we're looking at this review very strongly to make sure, as I said earlier, there is a place for the secondary market, we want the primary market to improve its procedures to make sure that consumers are looked after. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jerry Sutcliffe and uh, Nick Patel. Eric Baker, just about photo ID, is that is that a, a decent idea? Will it work? I think the, the short answer is no. So this is something that's been tried for years. They tried it in the States to put a name and ID. In fact, they even tried it in Europe for the World Cup in 2006. In Germany, yes. And what they found is they had to drop it after a week because um, operationally it was just way too difficult. It was an inconvenient thing for the fans and it wasn't achieving anything. So, again, while I think some of these uh, thoughts are well-intentioned and I think people should be looking for innovative new practices. But if you have more stewards, then you could cope with photo photographs and names on tickets, couldn't oh, you? Oh, there, there's no question that if you were willing to um, greatly increase your costs around the event, which would mean increasing the ticket prices and the hassles for consumers, uh, you could. Um, if you really wanted to, you could do retinal scans, but I probably wouldn't recommend that either. Did you always have a ticket with your photo on that for well, games yeah, in general? Well, no, I've, I've been to plenty of England mm. games, and I remember for the World Cup going to loads of England games there where I've been told, you know, you're going to get the, you need to have your name on the ticket and you're going to have your passport checked as you get near the ground. And of course, what happens is it gets 20 minutes before kickoff, and loads of happen. people turn up, and no one's checking anyone's name. Mm. Okay, well, there's lots for Jerry Sutcliffe to do, isn't there, Eric? Thank you. Thank you. No, no, thank you. <laughs> it's time for the weather. His